Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin. I cannot begin to tell you how delighted I am at the speakers that we have and the musicians. What better to start off this event than a classic Cincinnati group? And that would be Marco Sastry and the Bluebirds. car amplifiers? Uh, I do, along with uh, Dave Quick and a team of other guys. That... So that is uh, the Rambler. This is one of the, the styles that we've been making for many years. And uh, it just seems like it stays clean forever until you just really dig into it or push it really hard. So. The idea was to take what you really couldn't get out there on the market uh, in, a, in a mass production sort of a way. Use better woods, uh, use better dimensions on the woods, um, utilizing flatter radiuses, bigger fret wire, just things that guitar players want but would always have to special order to get them. This is an example of a mahogany back of sides dreadnought with an Adirondack spruce top, ebony fingerboard and bridge. And it's very close to what you would have seen if you had found a box from a, of a Martin guitar in 1937 that had been unopened since then. Folks, uh, please make welcome uh, Atlantic recording artist Dylan Hodges. We're just so proud of him. There he is right there. He's here for you. Grammy-nominated multi-instrumentalist Tim May. And I take you with me when I roll. I named her after you, this boat. I call my woman with him. He's a judge from the city. I'll trade a bullet for a broken heart. DHR. DHR. Buy your guitars at DHR. But after the war, and actually some started a little before the war, but mainly after World War II, the handmade archtop guitar began to come onto the scene in a pretty significant way. There were three main luthiers, which are guitar makers of the highest order, that we'll talk about briefly, because they form an unbroken line of development of this instrument.
one of the nicest guys and an absolute living legend, as Tom Van Hoos talked about, Mr. John Montalio. When I look at instruments to this day, I look at the bridge, uh, anybody's instrument. I always look at the bridge first. It tells me a lot of information. It tells me what the maker understands about sound and how to grab the most complete set of information to deal with, to take that information and now make use of it, put it into the instrument, sending it into places where it's supposed to go according to how that instrument is built. John Montalino.